super fascinating. Uh, the next two challenges, uh, I think, kind of go together. So I'll, I'll ask both at the same time, which is uh, most of your locations are uh, malls, airports, uh, and then obviously you have standalone as well. But the malls and airports um, are coming under pressure, right? Airports mainly from the COVID-19 and less travel. And then the malls, just because of the secular trend of like, everyone thinks malls are going away. Yeah. Uh, how have you dealt with that or kind of what decisions have you guys made uh, to kind of address that mitigate it um, or maybe capitalize on some opportunity there yeah. and then also a piece of that being like an entire delivery um, you know explosion during COVID-19 um, and I know you guys are doing some of that out of the malls as well so maybe talk just about like physical locations and delivery and, and kind of how you guys are navigating that. Yeah so much to unpack there so malls um Auntie Anne's is our only brand that's a majority exposed to malls. Cinnabon's even only one third in malls. The other third are in Schlotzky's, another third are in these like travel centers on interstate. So Auntie Anne's is the brand that's the most exposed and that's one of seven brands. So it's actually quite a small portion of our total portfolio, but it's a majority of this one enormous brand that we have. Um, so the last, to your point, the last several years, the trends of mall traffic, e-commerce siphoning off mall traffic, mall, you know, questions around malls and their viability, that's not new. That's been going on for almost a decade. Um, what, what is new is the acceleration of those trends from COVID and from just the increased adoption of e-commerce. So I'll, I'll touch on malls first and then go over to delivery because the rest of our business is street side. Um, and so um, a couple things are going on in malls. One, you have different malls, right? You've got A, B, C, D malls. They are what it sounds like they are. A, super premium. D, hyper local, like center of the community in a regional, maybe even sleepier area. Um, C and B malls have actually recovered faster from COVID because they are centers of the community. They're not just the place to shop. If a place is just a place to shop, it is equally, the demand shock is tremendous um, because you have alternatives with e-commerce. Um, so leading up to COVID, one, as you said, was layering in delivery, even from our mall businesses. And that wasn't easy for a couple of years. The malls didn't give driving drivers their spaces. It wasn't easy to park and navigate these huge centers. So it was clunky at first, but it got better as it became very clear that this was an important way to drive revenue for the business. So it got better over the last 18 months, being able to deliver Annie Ann's pretzels via Uber Eats or DoorDash or Postmates, which I guess is now Uber Eats, um, uh, or Easy Cater, right? catering businesses. Uh, but that's still only a portion of incremental sales. The lion's share was still coming out of the business. So a few things, one is learn how to increase the capture rate of the people who are coming in, fewer people coming in, figure out a way to capture your a larger fair share of the business. Um, second, of course, then was product development and other channels um, meal kits, pretzel kits, other things that help drive revenue. So it's looking outside the mall for the additional revenue opportunities, including delivery and DTC, but then optimizing for what's in the mall and then having a longer term view of which malls are going to survive, which ones are going to do well as a shopping and commerce center because they're just that good. Like the owners are going to keep plowing tens of hundreds of millions over time into them and which ones are going to have to be meaningfully repurposed as an asset in order to keep bringing traffic. And some of them are turning old um, Sears into apartments. Some are turning it into hospital. And there's a lot of really cool things you can do with that real estate. And if those developers figure it out, then there is still life, even in those malls, for small food tenants like our franchises. And then there will be some that are going to go away. So we have food trucks, pop-ups, hub and spoke models. There are many options. Like you exhaust all these options before you just say lights out, you know, in a location. And then remember the quickest way to get out of a hole is to stop digging. So for the last three years, we've been opening more and more street side businesses, um, but co-branding and tri-branding. So putting more brands, more day parts, more occasions together reduces the real estate investment risk and gives us access to more non-mall options. So that's the mall piece. Delivery, we were one of the first national chains to um, sign up with Postmates actually. Postmates was the early mover in the food delivery space before Uber Eats and DoorDash really got traction. Uh, and we were one of the first when they were only in 17 cities. And so delivery has been a part, growing part of our business for well over five years. But the last two years, it has become a material part of the brick and mortar 
business, uh, then add to the fact that we've been investing in our own apps, our own loyalty programs, you know, all these things allow us to have a direct relationship with our customers, as well as a direct way to serve our customers that are something other than come in, order, sit down. Since we had that technology during COVID, we flipped on curbside in 48 hours. We were already testing it and had it set up in some locations, but because we had made these investments, we were able to turn on different functionality, um, it, not just on the technology side, but on the operating model side that allowed us to also launch meal kits and Moe's Market and other things that kept us in business, uh, even when dining room business went away. Some of our brands have not reopened dining rooms and are doing pre-COVID sales just through pickup windows, delivery, drive through They're not all performing that, that way, but several are. So it's really interesting to think about how this accelerated innovation, in some cases, an improvement in profitability. Um, in other cases, we're still figuring out how in one operation to have all of these revenue channels, you know, curbside and pickup and pickup window and drive through if they have a drive through and app orders, and then the 10, 15% of people that actually still want to come in. And that's a lot to manage uh, with a small crew. So we're now navigating the operational impacts as all of that's converging. And you have the benefit, obviously, of having the seven different brands. How much of the infrastructure around the technology for, let's say, delivery and things like that is shared and you're just kind of white labeling it or, or relabeling it for each brand versus you're actually building a different technology stack for Auntie Anne's versus uh, Cinnabon versus the others? It's a great question. One day, it will all be the same. Um, but because we grow by acquisition, you know, we get what we buy. And sometimes we get something super old that's at end of life and we need to upgrade it anyway. And when we do, we bring it onto our platform. Other times it's, it's not old, it's not optimal, but it doesn't make sense to tear it apart based on the financial equation and other things you're working on. So you just tweak it. Um, and other things, when we bought Jamba, they were at the very beginning of a brand new technology contract and it was just too unwieldy to unwind and so we um you know we had to work our way around that but brand by brand as the window represents itself we bring them on to a common platform whether that's web general digital commerce loyalty apps and frameworks so it's it's a journey but the utopia uh is common platform so as we acquire brands you just reskin put it on alter it for whatever that business model is, different consumer frequency, um, you know, different segment or pricing tier potentially, but otherwise keep building on the successes. So we're about halfway through that journey. 